Hi everyone, my name is Daphne and welcome back to my ACCA Performance Management Intensive Revision course. Now, before we start off with the intensive revision course here, I think what is important is for us to have a look and to have a better idea about the PM examination. Now, so what we can do now, we're on this page of the ACCA website, the official website, and of course, we're going to look into the full specimen examination in terms of their exam format. Right, so let me just click on these past exam papers. And of course, if I'm going to move on, I'll be able to see the ACCA qualification and the next part following by the performance management. All right, here you go. And this is the PM part. Now, so what we're going to do is that we have a list of all the exam resources. And of course, always remember to check out on the syllabus content. And that's always important for you to have a better idea what are the areas of addition or deletion for your syllabus. Now, but what we're going to see today, it's very much on the CBE specimen. Right. So for these computer-based examination specimens, and we have the first on the full specimen exam. All right. So what we can see on this accglobal.com or this website, there are two parts of the exam questions. The first part is under the CBE specimen exam, and that shows you how the CBE likely to be. And number two, it's based on the past exam library. And that's very much to do with all the past exam questions, but to be safe as the PDF. So of course, now I'm going to show you here. Now it's always advisable to the candidates that you should go through all these parts to do with the introduction, all right, as well as the instructions of the exam before you attempt any of them. All right, so it has got about four pages here. Now, I'm not going to go through these here, but it's very much to show you how it looks like. And at the same time, I'm here more to show you the exam question format as well as, right, as, well as the style. Okay, great. So we're going to kickstart, say, for instance, section A. Now, as we know, for this ACCA PM here, there are three parts of the exam question. The very first part is section A. And the section A, it comprises of the 15 objective task questions and each of it with two marks here. So we know for this section A, that's going to be like a 30 marks in total. All right. Now, so always remember, the golden rule that we have is 1.8 minutes per one mark. So if that's the case, which means we're going to take this 20 marks, multiply with the 1.8 for section A, that's like 36 minutes. Now, that's the maximum time that you can spend here. And of course, subsequently, you have to move on to section B then. All right, so let's have a look. Now, so when you get to see the question that's to do with objective test, the OT, that could be in the multiple choice questions like these. And of course, you can select, right, you can select any of them as your answer. Not to forget, now you have to get all this calculation done and performed by the use of the scratch pad. So that's not a problem or even if you go for the use of the rough paper and to perform your calculation. Now, you basically have two different choices, two options. First, it's by the use of your own calculator or you can even use the on-screen calculator here. So you have two options. So it depends on which one you're gonna have or which one you prefer. And subsequently, we can see there's another part, uh, which is what we call as the explain answer. However, this feature will only be here for these 
online CBE specimen paper. We don't expect to see this in the real examination, don't you? Because we find that this is something to help and assist the students in understanding what's the right answer for each of the question demonstrated here. Right, so that's what you can see. And of course, not to forget, there's a navigator here that's for you to assess uh, the status of the questions, whether it is remain undone, unattempted, or you have read the questions but remain unattempted or even done. All right, so let's just move on. Now, as you can see, this kind of question is what we call as the number entry question. So what's that number entry? Now, once again, perform the calculation and what you have to do is to fill in the blanks. And remember, in most of the exam questions, we would expect to see clear instructions. Do you see that? So if they ask for two decimal places, make sure that you're here to include these as your answer. So by the time you state your answer in one decimal place or three decimal places, you tend to lose the two marks here. And remember, now, so some students even, they come back and say, hey, Steffi, so is that possible? Like, instead of going for two decimal places, I have shown more answer in one decimal place. And would I get half of the mark, for example, with one mark? But the answer is no, all right? So if we are looking at any of the multiple choice questions, always bear in mind that it's either you get two marks or you get nothing. All right, so this is one of it. I'm gonna move on like uh, once again, that's the number entry questions. All right, just watch out if you get to see some questions like these where they mentioned which two of the following statements. Now, which we believe that for this kind of the questions is pretty challenging as the students or the candidates are required to assess every single statement before they select the option or the answer. Now, so when they go for two, just bear in mind, now be very careful when selecting the answer. You know that if it's here, you can choose more than two. And therefore, that will be seen as a wrong answer as the question requires only two. All right, so just try to be really careful when you're selecting your answer. All right, so you have to spend some time, if it's possible, to assess on the answer. All right, so the accuracy, if it's possible, but I do understand that even students may face some difficulties, some problems in selecting the answer. All right, so that's one of it. Okay, fine. In our section A, the objective task questions may include the pull down many. All right, so we can just select one of them, but bear in mind that you have to perform all calculations before you select the right one. Okay, so what about the next type of the question? That's gonna be mix and match. All right, so students say, hey, Steffi, now we know that's like six parts of the questions here. Will I be able to score like one mark when I answer three correctly out of the six? As the answer is no, they have to get it all done correctly in order for you to score the two marks here. All right, great. Okay, so let's have a look at this kind of question. Now, this is a question that's on the decision making. And what I have to do is to select the right one. All right, so what's going to be your answer? Like this is a decision tree questions. So if you find that the answer is here, all right, so you just have to click on it, making sure that your cursor is right here. So when you click on that, and that it's what we call as the hotspot question. Right, so if you find the answer is right here, okay, that's what you have to do. Okay, so I would say that for performance management paper, the PM paper will get to see some questions to do with graph or chart, such as this decision tree. And in addition, we're able to see 
uh, some questions on CVP analysis. And we even get to see questions to do with linear programming, right? That's to do with the chart or the graph. Okay, great. So somehow uh, we know that uh, the mix and match elements is coming in once again. And we do have some questions to do it true or false. All right, so that's the mix and match again. All right, so something quite similar to what uh, we have gone through earlier with different types, except these, we haven't seen any. So making sure that you choose the right answer. So I have to get all four answered correctly. Okay, great. Now that's more towards the briefing of section A. And once again, you only have 36 minutes to answer 15 of the section A exam questions. All right, great. Now, what about these section B? Now, when it comes to this section B, as everyone get to see that that is three OT cases. So that's the objective task cases. We have three and each case that comprise of five OT questions. All right. So they are all independent question where I'm going to show you shortly. So we have five questions and each at two marks for each case. So we have about 30 marks in total. And again, I would say that these show to us that section A and B by itself in total, that comes to about 60 marks. And that's, that's by itself going to be quite significant, knowing that in order for you to pass the exam, you need around 50 marks here. All right, so that's the case. Now let's come back to this and have a look at this. All right, so you can actually just move around with this divider. Okay, so it depends on uh, if you really want to see the case. All right, so that's what it can do. You can adjust it easily. All right, so we're gonna have this case and for the next five questions, say for instance, uh, number entry questions. All right, or probably you have to choose three out of the six. Now, the difficulty level is even higher when it comes to this kind of question. Or even you can see, all right. So students may be asking that, may I know my previous question, say for example, like question four, uh, will it affect my answer in question number five? Of course not. So that's what we meant by independent question, which means now you may be getting an incorrect answer in your question four. However, these will bring no impact to your question number five. So not to worry about that, yeah? All right, great. Now, as you can see, subsequently, once you have completed the first case, and of course, there are three cases, and that's where uh, you can see the next five questions are here. Say, for instance, on the learning curve that will be covering these in the revision session as well. All right. So it could be the true or false question. That's not the problem. And make sure that it go through everything. So students may be asking once again, Safi, can I just check with you that uh, what's the maximum time for us to actually spend to write here? It's again a 36 minutes. All right. So uh, as we say, it's going to be like 1.8 minutes per mark. So since we have about 30 marks right here, all right, so that's like uh, 54 minutes, I would say. All right, sorry, 54 minutes for the first part. And if it's 20 marks, that's going to be 36. But since 30 marks first part at 54, and of course, this part is going to be another 54. All right. Okay, great, because it's 30 marks. Okay, fine. Now, so of course, once you have done your section A and B, I would suggest that you should answer the question following the sequence. So when I say following the sequence, which means um, some students, they probably prefer to go for section C first before A and B. Uh, we will still advise the student to follow the sequence, start attempting the questions of 
section A falling by B, and finally VC here. All right, so now we're going to see class that this section C with two CRQ or constructed response questions. Now bear in mind, that's what we call as the long questions, where you have to make use of both the Microsoft Excel as well as Word. Okay, so let's have a look. Now, so each question that's like 20 marks and in total that's 40 marks. So again, if you are taking these 40 marks multiplied with the 1.8 here, you have about 72 minutes right here. With each question, you have a maximum time of 36 minutes because as we say earlier, for any of the 20 mark exam question, you have maximum of 36 minutes here. All right, so let's have a look. As you can see, that's a case study. That's a case study. Okay, that's right. So with this case study, and you start to look at the instructions. So we start looking at these instructions where they said you're required to calculate the following and make sure that here you only come out with the calculation, the figures. So required to come up with the variances. All right, so the sales price variance, the material price, the labor rate variance. All right, so just make sure that you make use of all the sales right here if it's possible to come out with the answer. And of course, you can even state like, let's say number one on the sales price variance. Say for example. All right, so from there, that's how you create the formula and to apply back into the question and of course the briefing of the formula will be performed and done when we cover these in our subsequent videos to do with the standard costing and variance analysis now should there be any commands to be made here the answer is a no because we're looking at the calculation all right, so if you are seeing these uh, second part, which is part B, and that's where a word file will be brought in because we're here to look into how to explain uh, the reasons why blah, blah, blah. So again, when you're preparing your answers, you can come up with the reasons and that shows that in a way how you apply back into the scenario. All right, so... That's pretty straightforward. Now, once again, we will suggest to students that when you are preparing any answers that's to do with uh, theoretical aspects, the discursive area. So what we can do is trying to underline this. All right, so we come up with a heading. Heading is important. So always come up with a heading. So with this heading, that's where you bring in the points. All right, that's important. We can come up with the points here. So these particular points refer to the point of your Ronza. For example, when we talk about the reasons. And not to forget, it's important for you to bring in elaboration. All right, so elaboration, that's important. And not to forget about the example, if it's possible. But it's very much depends on the requirement of the questions. So is it with the word explain or briefly explained or even with the word discuss? Because all these will give rise to different parts of the answer, I would say. All right. So if it's with points, elaboration and example, uh, we get to see this is very much to do with explanation. So to explain. All right, so what about if it's something like this? I mean, your examiner loves applying the word to this cause. All right, so if let's say to this cause on the use of just in time system by the business, we're bringing the point why do you think it is beneficial to the business plus elaboration? plus example and we can bring in the word however all right so that's just in a way to tell us 
that if you are here to implement the JIT system, so what would be the advantages that it will bring to the business? And at the same time, what could be the possible impact? All right. For example, uh, that could be quite slow response to the market demand. Okay, so we can bring in the word however. And that makes your explanation more complete. So I would say it depends on what's going to be the keyword to be used in the examination. All right, that's great. Now, of course, uh, this is just part of them. And making sure that we can have some other keywords like command. All right, so whether you should give it that or not. So that's important. But if you only see the word calculation, and which means there'll be no command, all right, no uh, explanation to be made right there. Okay, great. Okay, fine. Now, so this is the next case for question 32. And once again, you can see the use of the word fire because they need us to assess the financial performance, right? So that's not a problem for TIP. Uh, it's one of the past exam questions. So they're making use of these and they need us even to assess, say, for instance, the quality of the work by the use of the non-financial data. All right, so here you go. Now, so we can actually see right here that it indicates to us whether it's correct or incorrect. And of course, uh, once again, this was just based on my random selection earlier. And in your real examination, uh, are you able to see whether it's correct or incorrect right away after your attempt? Um, no, because that would still be subject to expert marked, where ACC would take around five weeks for the marking of these exam answer. All right, so that's a wand. Okay, so uh, we get to see that's when we review all, if you intend to do so. Are oh, we coming back to the review screen? Okay, fine. So of course, do spare some time to review if you manage to do so. All right, I would say. So otherwise, you know, we get to see that and that's how you're going to exceed the exam and will then be submitted to ACCA. All right, so that's just a simple briefing as well as the introduction of your ACCA performance management, the online computer-based examination, as well as the exam format. So just bear in mind that there are three parts of the exam question. The first part is going to be section A, it's all about the OT questions. Section B, that's the OT case study. So another 30 marks here. First part, 30 marks as well. 54 minutes for section A and B. And then subsequently with section C, the CRQ, where we have two questions and in total 40 marks. And we believe that it's with 72 minutes here. So bear in mind that in order for you to go for these ACC PM paper, you have maximum three hours in the examination. All right, so if this is clear for you, and guys, welcome to our very first part up next year, our very first part of our ACCAPM online IRC. Thank you very much.